Good morning, everyone. I'm Chirag Dalal from the Biocon Investor Relations team. And welcome to Biocon Limited's Analyst and Investor Call on our announced collaboration with Serum Institute Life Sciences. All participants in this call will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the opening remark concludes. Should you need to raise questions, please select the raise hand option under the reactions tab of your Zoom application. We will call out the name and enable you to unmute your line to ask the question. While asking, please begin with your name and organization. Please note, we will not be monitoring any questions on the chat box, but you can raise any technical concerns that you may be facing for our support team to help. This call is being recorded. To speak on our announced collaboration, we have today with us the Biocon leadership team comprising Dr. Kiran Majundar Shaw, our executive chairperson, and other senior management colleagues. I would also want to take this opportunity to remind everyone about Safe Power. Today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and based on the management's current uh, beliefs and expectations. It must be viewed in concurrence with the risk that our business faces that could cause our future results, performance, or achievements to differ significantly from what is expressed or implied on, by such forward-looking statements. After the end of the call, if you need any further information or clarifications, please get in touch with uh, Nikunj Mal or, or me. Now, I would like to turn the call over to Dr. Kiran Majundar Shaw. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Chirag, and good morning, everyone. I would like to welcome you to this very important conference call to discuss uh, Biocon Biologics uh, Strategic Alliance with Serum Institute Life Sciences. Let me start by saying that Biocon Biologics has been focused on a vision to deliver affordable, innovative, and inclusive healthcare solutions for global health. Thus far, its mission has been primarily focused on biotherapeutics for non-communicable diseases. However, we do believe that a strong presence in communicable diseases is an essential element to have a holistic impact on patient lives. Can I have the next slide, please? In the last couple of decades, we have seen a rapid increase in the frequency of viral outbreaks. Besides COVID-19, there have been several other viral outbreaks in different parts of the world, such as dengue, Zika, Ebola, etc., which have had a devastating impact on human life. We actually expect this trend to continue in terms of future uh, and emerging pandemics. As we have seen during COVID-19, pharma companies globally have been channelizing their resources to come up with vaccines as well as antibody therapies. However, we have also observed that there remains a meaningful gap in getting these therapies to a large section of society, especially in low and middle income countries. And we believe that Biocon Biologics can contribute to this effort in bridging this gap through this partnership. Biotherapeutics have been an important tool to fight against infectious diseases. And it is no secret that Biocon's achievements are underpinned by its robust biomanufacturing platform. Over the years, as you can see from this slide, we have developed expertise starting with enzymes, which was our founding phase, to fermentation-derived APIs, followed by insulins, monoclonal antibodies, fusion proteins, and therefore vaccines are a natural adjacency to our existing capabilities, especially with the emerging uh, impact of viral diseases uh, on human health. And I think this is something which is only now being uh, you know, visible and apparent to the industry as a whole. In the past, we used to focus largely on non-communicable diseases, but it is very clear that the future is about both non-communicable and infectious diseases. Over the past 18 months, we have efficiently mobilized our capabilities to develop a solid portfolio for the treatment of COVID-19, thereby impacting more than 50,000 lives. I would like to mention that our repurposed drug Alzumab L 
has been instrumental in treating moderate to severe COVID-19 patients in India who have basically uh, suffered from the cytokine release syndrome. Most recently, we have announced a collaboration with Adagio Therapeutics for their novel CD19 antibody therapy ADG20. We believe that once approved, this would be a very important therapeutic option for patients to win against COVID-19. The collaboration we have forged with Serum Institute enables our entry into the vaccines market and we consider this to be an augmentation of our current efforts in COVID-19 and a major milestone for Biocon Biologics uh, aspiration to build, this, build its presence in the infectious disease space. BPL and SILS have entered into a strategic alliance for vaccines and infectious disease antibodies. Under the terms of the agreement, Biocon Biologics will offer approximately a 15% stake to SILS, for which it will get a committed access to 100 million doses of vaccines per annum from SILS's upcoming vaccine facility in Pune. It will also get commercialization rights to a large vaccine portfolio of SILS, which also includes COVID-19 vaccines, and this commercialization rights will be for global markets. The two companies will enter into service level agreements for manufacturing and distribution of the vaccines, as well as antibodies that are likely to come into this partnership. We expect this collaboration to start generating revenue and related margins from second half of FY23, although there is an earlier opportunity for uh, Biocon Biologics to book revenues from vaccines through other uh, you know, opportunities that we look at in terms of commercialization and manufacturing. As mentioned earlier, the growth of in our communicable disease portfolio through in-house products and collaborations augment our existing biosimilar business. Both antibody therapies and vaccines, we believe, are synergistic to our biosimilar platform across R&D, manufacturing, and commercialization. It has been agreed between uh, the two partners that we will establish a vaccine R&D division to develop both vaccines and biologics for communicable diseases. While expanding into adjacencies would further boost the growth of Biocon Biologics, we of course continue to remain bullish on the overall biosimilar opportunity. We are continuing to invest in our biosimilar franchise, leading to expansion of our current product portfolio, manufacturing capacity, and commercial strength. The recent interchangeability label of insulin glargine in the US clearly positions us for renewed growth of our biosimilars business. We are excited to see the investment made over the last decade, which has allowed us to quickly weave multiple avenues of growth for Biocon Biologics. Each of them is strategically important for Biocon Biologics' long-term growth. And this partnership, we believe, is definitely value accretive and asset light in addition to the fact that it gives us a huge new opportunity, which will augment our biosimilars growth and you know, position us in a very strong position um, as we move into the future um, with both products and uh, you know, focus on non-communicable diseases and now infectious diseases, largely viral diseases. So with that, I would like to open the floor to questions. Thank you, ma'am. <clears throat> I would like to remind everyone that you can, uh, to ask a question, you can raise your hand uh, in the, you can raise your hand in the Zoom, uh, in the reactions tab of the Zoom application. We will call out your name and enable you to unmute your line to ask the question. Please note that we wouldn't be monitoring questions on the chat box, but you can raise any technical concerns over there. The first question is from Damianti Karai from HSBC. Hi, 
Hi, uh, good morning. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Yes. Okay, ma'am, congratulations on the deal. Uh, so two questions from my side. First, uh, this 15 year agreement with SILS, what kind of uh, revenue potential you see over uh, this time period? And my second question is for global distribution of vaccines. Uh, will you be utilizing your existing uh, uh, infrastructure or you need to put some investments from your side? And if yes, uh, what is uh, your expectation on that investment? So these are two my questions. So Damianti, obviously, uh, you know, you can understand that 100 million doses of vaccines uh, have a very large revenue potential. Uh, the core, uh, I mean, the margins also are very, uh, you know, uh, uh, attractive because they are in line with our core EBITDA margins in the mid 30s. And we believe that uh, this is going to be a, a, a long term opportunity. You can assess what the uh, opportunity is from the fact that, you know, the pricing of vaccines is anywhere between three to ten dollars, uh, depending on which market you serve. Uh, so we are very excited with this uh, opportunity. And of course, right now, as I said, it will start with largely COVID vaccines, but in the future, there will be many other vaccines. And, you know, it's difficult to uh, project the exact revenues over a 15-year horizon. Now, in terms of leveraging our existing infrastructure, of course, we are uh, going to be doing that. Obviously, we will not invest in new infrastructure, but we will wait to see what the demand is. Because as you know, Serum Institute itself has a very large uh, you know, uh, manufacturing infrastructure. We will uh, basically support that. And if need be, we will uh, you know, expand our existing infrastructure dedicated to perhaps vaccines uh, as we move into this partnership. I hope I've answered the questions. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, just a clarification. This investment on manufacturing, uh, as you mentioned, might not be required in initial stage. I was asking uh, more from your commercial uh, infrastructure, which is required for distribution. So, uh, Well, I think the commercial uh, infrastructure right now that we have in terms of our access uh, commercial team is uh, going to be adequate initially, but we will add to it. Because obviously we are very familiar uh, with uh, you know the access markets around the world, and so I think this is something which will obviously uh, serve us well to expand that team. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I'll get back in the queue. Thanks, Amanti. Next question is from Nitya Balasubramaniam from Bernstein. Yeah, hello. Uh, uh, if you can talk to us a little bit about uh, what would be your target markets. Are there certain markets where you're likely to uh, focus more early on? And if you can also talk to, talk to us about other than COVID, what other disease areas and what are the vaccines we might see come out of this partnership uh, in the early days? It's too early to comment on all the markets, but obviously we will look at developing world markets at the beginning. And then of course, we will also look at developed world markets uh, in the interim uh, at later stage. Um, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, so, so it's very early to basically talk about that. Um, your second question was- Was on the target disease areas? Target disease, yes. I think we have already mentioned in our press release that Obviously, it goes beyond COVID-19. There are some very interesting opportunities uh, in, in many of the viral disease areas. As you know, as you know uh, dengue, uh, chikungunya, many, many other, uh, uh, malaria. As you know, the um, Institute has already shared with, uh, in, in the public domain that their malaria trial, vaccine trial is going very well. That could also be part of this partnership many many other opportunities that we are discussing I, at this point in time i can't say much more got it if i might just follow it up with a quick question so i'm assuming that you will not be competing with the uh, sii in the gavi space right so they will exclusively participate in tenders and you will be targeting the private market is that right i cannot share such details with you but suffice to say that obviously it's a partnership and the way we carve out the business between us will obviously be optimal to both. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Nitya. Next question is from Shyam Srinivasan from Goldman Sachs. 
Hi, uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, just uh, the first one um, is on um, is on um, in terms of the valuation for this. Uh, just trying to understand how we should look at it. I think you said 100 million doses, bottom end four dollars, 400 million, mid 30s uh, margins is 120 million. I'm just coming up with these numbers, but and then I look at the 750 million. Uh, which is what the incremental number has come. So it seems to be seven times EVA bid. Uh, you're trading much higher. So just trying to understand how we should look at this because, uh, you know, and again, going back to Serum Institute's own um, capacities, I think 1.5 billion if you were to annualize August production from them. So you're getting 100 million out of 1.5 billion, which is six, 7%, uh, but you're partaking 15% of Biocon Biologics. So just if you could run us through some of the economics, what, what could I be missing in terms of this? So, Sham, you're not comparing apples with apples, okay, if I may say so. You're cherry-picking different numbers. And I don't think that's the way you go about valuation, if I may say so. Sure. I will defer to Chini to add to that. Sham, yeah. So, we, and pricing will change over time. But, yes, current pricing around the COVID vaccines is in the $4 range, average pricing. And, yes, it's yeah, when you play the ma roll the maths over, it comes to that one forty, one fifty million dollars of EBITDA. Now, that is the starting. Now, how it will play over time? What are the new opportunities that will come out of this whole collaboration? And things will it will really open up new doors or new avenues for growth. And you have to look at it from that angle. From a valuation angle, yes, what we have. Um, the value of the shares being issued is in the $735 million range. The benefits that will accrue, we believe, will be more than this, and but will accrue over time. Got it. Uh, very helpful. My second and last question. Just in terms of the uh, rationale for the deal, I know you outlined a few things at the start, but, uh, you know, was vaccine an area that we were always looking at? And you know, how did this kind of deal materialize, uh, Madam Kiran, if you could just tell yeah. us, you know, just yeah. and the culture between the two companies, if there is any softer aspects you could highlight. Yeah, that's a very good question, Sham. I'll answer it in three ways. Obviously, with, with what was happening with the pandemic, it became very apparent that there was a large opportunity in vaccines. And obviously, we did consider various options, you know, from greenfield to brownfield, but we felt that this was the best entry that we could have into vaccines uh, and the fastest entry we could have in the vaccines. It was asset light. And I said it was hugely value accretive for us. And we felt that this would actually help us to focus on new vaccine platforms in terms of R&D and work together with Serum Institute that is such an experienced company when it comes to vaccine development and vaccine production. So we just felt that this was a very unique partnership rather than us having to reinvent the wheel or even to basically acquire a facility and then rely on expertise coming from the acquired facility. We felt this was a much better model. And um, in terms of the cultural fit, I think there's a very good cultural fit between the two companies, starting with me and other Punawala. And of course, right down to the leadership, I think that we found that the cultural fit was very, very good. So I think overall, we felt this was the way to go forward in vaccines. Next question, Nikul. Thanks. Uh, the next question is from Surya Patra, Philip Capital. Okay. Uh, hello. Yeah. Uh, congratulations for the good, great deal, man. Uh, one thing just, uh, uh, you have also mentioned that uh, the subsidiary is also, subsidi the step-down step subsidiary of Serum Institute is going to be merged. So what assets that is to be added uh, with that merger, or it is just a kind of a vehicle through which that you are doing this deal? Well, the, the, the subsidiary actually uh, owns all the rights to everything that we have discussed. And that is what will be merged with the bio biologics. Okay. Uh, no tangible asset or anything that we at this juncture can talk about, right? Well, as you know, the deal is really about 
uh, access to the 100 million vaccines which have to be produced in a certain facility. And so we have uh, you know, make, made sure that all these uh, aspects of uh, the vaccines we are eligible or have access to uh, will be uh, contained in that subsidiary. Uh, and uh, about the vaccines, ma'am, uh, access uh, for vaccines, what you mentioned, it is like 10 crore vaccines annually for 15 years that you have mentioned. And you have also mentioned about uh, access to the uh, other uh, the portfolio of vaccines of Serum Institute. So that means uh, it is all put together 10 crore vaccine or it is 10 crore plus? No, no. Right now, the, the understanding is it will be a, a minimum of 10 crores, which will, you know, which, which will cover all these uh, portfolio of vaccines that they have. But, you know, as we said, in due course, we will see uh, what we can uh, do about okay. and augmenting the partnership. Okay. Just last question on the valuation side, uh, Shor. Uh, so, uh, while we are... Uh, at this juncture, you're talking about the COVID vaccine, which possibly could be priced at, let's say, $4. But uh, the average pricing of uh, uh, the, the all the vaccines, what serum would be selling, that would be around $2 or something like that. So uh, that is keeping that thing in mind, uh, what incremental business that you are considering while valuing um, Biocon Biologic at this uh, from the uh, alliance means uh, apart from the vaccine, are you considering um, a kind of meaningful chunk of incremental revenue from other initiatives or alliances? Yeah, first and foremost, I think you're talking about old vaccines. We are talking about new generation vaccines, which I think will not be at a $2 range. Sure. Uh, secondly, I think there are other products, like I mentioned, biologics, that is antibodies for viral diseases. These are also being developed between the two partners. As you know, Biocon has very strong capabilities in that. And that is why we said we are going to cross leverage each other's capabilities and infrastructure. So I think you should look at that as also being value accretive. Sure. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Wish you all the best. Thanks. Next question from Charulata from the Lal and Rocha. Yeah. Congrats on the great, uh, great deal. Uh, my my question pertains to uh, the recent uh, recent ten valent vaccine that was uh, announced by that was uh, commercialized by Serum. Uh, is is that vaccine also a part of this uh, commercialization? Well, at this point in time, but we will look at uh, many vaccines, as I mentioned to you, over time. Okay. And uh, the, the deal also mentions the commercialization of a new facility at Pune. So uh, by, by when uh, do we expect to commercialize the plant? I mean, serum. I already mentioned, Charulata, that, uh, you know, the commercial uh, agreement is that, uh, you know, the uh, uh, vaccine contribution to biologics uh, would actually start from uh, October next year. So I think uh, that, that's when the actual commercial uh, agreement is uh, going to start. But even in advance of that, we are actually looking at other possible opportunities that Biocon can actually uh, leverage uh, in terms of some of the serum vaccines. Okay. And lastly, in the, does, does the deal also include tenders or is tenders going to be treated separately by serum? No, there is no such hard and fast uh, understanding. We are going to be looking at it uh, in an optimal way and equitable way and we will proceed as and what we think is appropriate. Okay. And there will be a profit sharing? Yeah. Okay. Fine. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. Next uh, is uh, Alok from Dan Capital. Uh, good morning, madam, and congratulations. This is one of the wonderful deal of its kind. Never heard of since the 
covid uh, came into play so great uh, madam just you answered all my questions just one question i have is while you are acquiring all the intangibles in this subsidiary uh, from here on uh, any improve improvisation on these vaccines is led by biocon or it is led by serum it is led by the partnership as i mentioned you know we are going to be getting into an r and d partnership we are going to also cross leverage each others infrastructure so whilst you keep talking about uh, uh, intangibles let me also say that biocon also brings infrastructure to this partnership for leveraging as i mentioned biologics for uh, uh, infectious disease is another big area where antibodies are proving to be very effective so i think you know this opportunity to bundle anti uh, antibodies and vaccines is a very unique partnership so we will cross leverage each others uh, you know uh, infrastructure and capabilities to address these large opportunities that are emerging in infectious and viral diseases great one last question on this uh, madam uh, on the biologics you have great ambitions you have a huge product pipeline yeah. uh, with this partnership is there is there any sort of non compete agreed with them no because biosimilars is something which is our main core business and that of course is something that we are pursuing uh, with a lot of uh, global leadership there is no uh, i mean in the sense the serum is focusing really on vaccines and and uh, as i mentioned biologics for infectious diseases and uh, of course there is no need for a non compete because we are global leaders in what we do so it is restricted only for covid uh, covid vaccine that's it no it is it is it, this partnership is about vaccines okay actually about the covid vaccines to begin with but it includes other vaccines as well so if you decide to get into a, any new vaccine to treat any so ailment that it has to be in partnership with serum okay it has to be necessarily in partnership there okay thank you madam that answers my question thanks alok next question from kunal mk captain uh hey, good morning so uh when we say we are uh, eligible to get around uh, 100 million vaccines yeah. every year uh will we have to pay uh, let's say some of the cost of production to uh, uh you know serum when we acquire those kind of uh, vaccines no there is a as i said there is an understanding in terms of how we the vaccines uh, you know access to the vaccines and the profit share so i think that model is very clear how we go about it it's a very simple structure okay sure and the second question is uh, whether this deal would require uh, minorities approval minority shareholders approval i don't believe so because it's a private company as you know as yet the minority shareholders of bbl have agreed for the deal yeah Sure. The the, the uh, yes the, the private equity investors the private equity investors yes that they were going to okay sure and the last question on when we say that we'll be setting up the R and D facility uh, and whatever we uh, you know uh, research and development that we do whether those costs will also be shared with the serum yeah we are in yeah, that is something that we will uh, you know uh, share between the two partners sure thank you. Thanks. Next is uh, Tushar Manudane from Motila Lospa. Good morning. Am I audible? Yeah. Just on, uh, if I look back on the previous deals of Bayon with with Myla and or Sandoz, there has been a gradual shift towards getting into commercial aspect as well. And even now, this deal is more of getting completely into commercialization and. getting the manufacturing or a development co part so if you could just elaborate on how this commercial strength has improved over past years and how it will be uh, you know in the coming time of biocon across global market so you will see that um, you know biocon actually has been focusing on emerging and uh, you know row markets whilst you know uh, viatris has been really focused on the developed world markets uh we believe that we have made significant uh, you know advancement in our markets and i think we are beginning to get very strong 
and uh, well entrenched in many, many of the global markets, which we have begun to understand very well. We have a huge reputation in these markets and we believe we can leverage these markets uh, for products like uh, you know, vaccines and antibodies for infectious diseases. So uh, getting the regulatory approval for these vaccines, that will be Biocom's uh, effort? Well, it will be a combined effort, but wherever required, obviously, Biocon will also uh, seek uh, regulatory approvals in, if, if required in certain markets. All right, thanks. That answers my question. Thank you. Thanks, Kishar. Uh, next one is from Nitya from Bernstein. Uh, yeah, I just have one quick question. So you had mentioned that this opportunity is likely, uh, will likely have EBITDA in the range of mid thirties. Is this pre or post the profit share? It is, what do you mean pre or post? It is post profit share. It's post profit share. All right, thank you. So I think that was the last question. We thank you everyone for joining the call today. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to reach out to Chirag or myself. We look forward to seeing you in our quarterly results. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh.